coming year. Uh, Gracie yeah. Scholl was elected as your president. Now, I have no idea who won what other roles, because as we said that night, they don't really matter. It is the, the, the actual role of historian or parliamentarian or any of those. It's just a leadership team. Okay, so we had J.C. Vord, Riley Gearhart, and Tatiana Lockridge, and Meg Hops Gibson, and Cassidy Robertson were the rest of your officers, so we wanted to make sure you knew who they were. If you have specific questions about things as we go on through the course of this year and next year, this is who you will talk to. Obviously, you can always talk to me, or Mr. Fossil, or Mr. Robiak, or Mr. Stump, or any of the other faculty council that may be. Um, around that you may have in class this year, like Mr. Baker or Ms. Ada, next year Ms. Watson or Ms. Subler. Um, but these are kind of your go-to people. If there's a problem you have, a question you have, a concern you have, a suggestion you have, you talk to one of them. Don't talk to us. Thank you, ladies. You may have a seat. Okay, so you have two sheets of paper. First, we're going to talk about the white sheet of paper. More money for you to pay. Yay. We have to pay dues so that we are officially a chartered organization. $400. And the dues, yes, used to be $85 a year. Now they are $400 a year, so that's gone up a little bit. Officers pay. And then we have a t-shirt, which you have seen people wear, although your t-shirt will be different. We changed it this year. New t-shirts for you. We've had this t-shirt a long time, probably a good 10 years. Not quite, because we've been... How long have you been in the chapter? 10 years? 14. Yeah. Okay, a long time. All right, so it is eight or nine years. All right, so your shirt is pictured down below. It's going to be red. Okay, we're red. We want things that stand out when you are working somewhere. Now, we ask you to wear your T-shirt at any NJHS-sponsored event that you sign up for. And you'll start being able to sign up for those here in a month or so. And, and I'll explain why it will be a month in a little bit. But we want people to be able to look around and go, there's an NJHS person to help. Or on preview day, which you may remember, National Honor Society members maybe walked you to your classes and showed you where you were going. You will have that opportunity to do that this year for the incoming seventh graders. We want to be able to say, find somebody in the red shirt. Okay, so um, when you are picking your size, remember, this is your shirt through May of 2017. Now, you're going to get bigger, boys. Girls, you're going to get probably bigger. fine. You don't grow dramatically. Extra, 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 extra. Boys, there's a good chance you're going to grow between your seventh and eighth grade year, not you, me, and you're done. <laughs> so I know you like to wear them a little tighter. Whatever you order, if you ordered a team shirt this year, my suggestion is get the size up. You can absolutely reorder a shirt next year, but you will have to pay for that shirt. Okay, you you have to buy another one. Ten dollars. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So my suggestion is go a size up from what you would wear right now. That way you're good for the rest of the year. Girls, you're probably fine. Um, so that needs to be turned in with a check. Could be cash, but check is easier. $25, again, that's t-shirt and dues, um, and you turn that in with this form, and you can tear it in half if you want, to, if you want to keep the bottom information for yourself. Make sure you circle your size, and you give that to Mr. Robiak. If you give it to me, that's fine, I'm just going to turn around and give it to Mr. Robiak. If you give it to Mr. Stump, that's fine, he's going to turn around and give it to Mr. Robiak. So if you want to bypass the middleman and just give it to Mr. Robiak, that would work. We'd like to have these in by Wednesday of next week. That way we can get, because we can't order the shirts until we have all the sizes. So get this taken care of as soon as you can. I'd like to say tomorrow, but that seems a little tight, so we'll, we'll go for next week. Um, now, at the bottom, there's a thing in there about the Remind account, which we mentioned, some of you have signed up for. If you have not signed up for the Remind, we're going to want you to do that, do that before you walk out of the room. Do it right now. You should have the Remind app. On your iPad, because I think every teacher, at least seventh grade teacher, uses it. You're supposed to have it. Turn on notifications. If you have not, if you don't get a little red number, and if you don't get a message that pops up in the middle of your screen, do it. Because I'm tired of people who send their own oh, don't these messages. Yes, you are. You're just not opening the app and looking at them. So if you turn on notifications, you'll know something has been sent. Get that taken care of. 
I will tell you right now, this is how we send out events. We don't put things in daily announcements anymore. We don't send emails. We don't post things. It is through Remind. If you choose to not sign up for the Remind or you choose to not look at it and pay attention, you will never know when there's an event. And I'm going to tell you right now, you will miss every event. Because based on what we started doing it this year, our 8th grade teacher, or our 8th grade students, we sent out a thing today that had 33 slots available to help work a carnival at Cumberland, I don't know, some school, yeah, it doesn't Cumberland matter. Road. Cumberland Road, 33 slots available. I sent it out in the middle of first period. By the end of second, all 33 slots were full. And we need Jake Connor. You leave it? Is he leaving? Larabee needs you. Larabee needs you. Why are you not in Larabee's class? Take all your stuff. Don't leave. Why are you leaving things here? And it's poopy, not crap. All right. So, remind is key. When we have events that have multiple people like that, 33 signs, we use Sign Up Genius. And Sign Up Genius, in the remind, I will send a link. You just tap on that link. It takes you right to the, to the page. And you'll see if there's multiple slots available, you'll sign up and put your name in there. And at that point, you have committed to that position. So one thing we stress with eighth graders, never sign up for something and then go, oh, I'm going to sign up and then I'll ask my parents if I can do it. No. Because you can't just go in and take your name out. You've got to go to Mr. Fossil directly and I'll say, Mr. Yeah. Fossil, can yeah. you take my name? Can you take my name out? And he's going to go, no. You signed up for it, it's your responsibility. So sometimes things happen. You get sick. You know, you may sign up for something, parents said it was okay, a week later something else has come up. Because we'll send sign-ups out a couple weeks in advance. If you have signed up, your responsibility is to go find another one of these 140 people sitting around you and say, hey, can you take my slot on this day? I guarantee you, you can find somebody if you ask. Okay? But you've got to make sure that that slot gets full. Because if we get word back from people, so-and-so didn't show up, so-and-so didn't show up, so-and-so didn't show up, so-and-so is no longer in National Honor Society. Simple as that. We are responsible. Okay, we follow through. If you make a commitment, then you've committed. So when we send those things out, don't sign up for them until you have confirmed that you know you can go. All right? And... We also have a general policy that when we send out things, and if there's multiple slots available for, like, say, a carnival, because a lot of times it'll be, you can work from 6.30 to 8.30, and then 8.30 to 10.30, or whatever it may be. We ask that you only sign up for one of those slots. And then, after this thing's been out a few days, if you want to go back and look and see if there's still slots available, absolutely, then you can fill that in. Once people have numerous days to be able to take care of something, but normally they fill it pretty quickly. So don't take a slot away from somebody else. Now, here's why that's key. Four requirements, and this goes down to the quick reminders down below. Every nine weeks, you have two requirements you must fulfill. One, you must complete ten service hours each nine weeks. That's the fourth nine weeks, then the first nine weeks of your seventh grade or eighth grade year, second nine weeks of your eighth grade year, third nine weeks of your fourth uh, of your um, what do you call it? Eighth grade. eighth grade year. Fourth nine weeks, we don't really have an hour requirement that you have to get done. Although you do need 50 hours of community service, so there's 40 hours right there. We do not have a requirement over the summer of hours that you have to get. You don't have to get any hours over the summer at all. It's up to you whether or not you want to. But if you do? Fourth nine weeks, there's still things available, and you can definitely still earn hours, but we don't have a minimum hour requirement to get at that point. Because honestly, most of our students will have their 50 hours right around now. Some of them will have them before the end of this nine weeks is up. But we don't want, the reason we, we maintain that, even if you have your 50 hours, you still have to get 10 hours of service each of those nine weeks. Because we don't want you going, oh, I did my hours, now I'm done, I don't have to do anything, and then basically just check out for a year. So you have to earn 10 hours every nine weeks, and you have to participate in at least one NJHS sponsored event each nine weeks. So that's why we don't want you signing up for multiple slots. Or once you've signed up for an NJHS event, don't sign up for another one until for a not during the nine weeks. Again, unless it's been out a few days and nobody's filling up, because you're taking away opportunities from people. Okay, because all of you have to sign up for one of our NJHS events 
every nine weeks, and that includes the fourth nine weeks. Okay? So, that's how this works. Now, you get hours for basically anything you do to serve somebody. We touched on this once, but we wanted to stress it again, as I've already had people asking about it. Your family does not get your service. Babysitting your brothers and sisters, helping dad clean out the attic, that's, you're a member of a family, that's what you do. We typically don't ask, we don't give you service for helping out grandma either, because again, you're their grandchild. Now, if your mom is a teacher, or they work somewhere, and they need somebody to go into work and help out the work, or help out, you know, a service in that way, that's not helping your parent out. That's not doing things around your house, that's serving. Neighbors, absolutely fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And literally, you can come up with just about anything. As long as you're not getting paid for it, and as long as it's not benefiting you or your family members, then you're going to get service hours for it. If you ever have a question, just ask one of us. Hey, is this going to give me service hours? Odds are it will. Now, if you do things like, uh, we have people who say they go on a mission trip. Yes, you get hours for mission trips. You don't get 24 hours of service for going on a mission trip. Because I don't care where you were serving, you were going to sleep at some point, regardless of whether you were in Columbia or whether you're in Fishers. So you don't get hours for that. You don't get hours when you're eating. Normally we kind of cap it about, you know, seven, eight hours if you're working for seven or eight hours. But you give service for that, working vacation Bible schools at churches, helping out in Sunday school rooms at churches, staying after school and helping a teacher get stuff done, going to a teacher's best period, and doing work for them gets you hours. And those count as NJHS-sponsored events. Because we consider helping the teachers out in the school as a constant uh, support. And all of our teachers know that if they need people to do something during best, all they need to do is find out who's an NJHS student and say, hey, come to me during best. For example, I'm going to be having some 8th graders coming in tomorrow to be cutting blindfolds for us to use at Camp Tecumseh. They're going to get service hours for that. And it's your, if you work the entire best, that's 30 minutes. So that's kind of how you go about getting hours. Um, the next thing we want to touch on down here are grades, and then we can take some questions here in a second if you have them, or let these guys cover something. Notice it says, watch your grades. You must maintain a 9.875 GPA. Now, that is semester grades, and they are cumulative. You're supposed to know what that means, but I know you don't. We're cutting seven. So, so basically, it means that you take your GPA from first semester of seventh grade, and combine it with your GPA for second semester of seventh grade, which means you could have a lower seventh grade GPA or second semester GPA and still still be above this point. The reason we dropped it to 9.875, you don't know, it was 10.0 to get in. The reason we keep it lower is because we don't wait classes. And in eighth grade, some of you guys may take some advanced classes. Some of you are going to take Spanish, which is an honors class, and you're going to get C's and D's in that class. I promise you, at least 30 of you in this room will have a C for a semester grade in Spanish next year. Just get ready to deal with it. And so we lower the GPA a little bit to kind of make up for that. So I don't want to hear any kind of thing of, but I'm in advanced math. Doesn't that count for more? No. If you're in advanced math, you belong in advanced math. If you're in advanced English, you belong in advanced English. So you cannot use, well, you're supposed to belong in advanced English. <laughs> So you cannot use that as an excuse for why you've got to be. It doesn't matter. It's rare that people's grades drop dramatically, but they will. I will tell you right now, it's why we stress this when you apply. Your best grades were going to be first semester of seventh grade. Your second best grade is going to be this coming semester. So like your nine weeks grades right now don't really matter, except that they play a role in what your semester grade is going to be. Now, the one thing that does play a role is the next line. If you get a D or an F in a class... I don't care what the class is. I don't care if it's a nine weeks class. I don't, it does not matter to me. If you get a D or an F in any of the nine weeks classes, you are automatically out of National Junior Honor Society. Because in this school, the only way to get a D or an F is to blow off work and not do what you're supposed to do. Right. And as fossils was whispering over here, we're going to lose seven current eighth grade NJHS students because their grades dropped. And this, this third nine weeks is, was kind of like their last time to get their grades up. Because we look at semester, 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 three semesters worth of grades. And if, at, and if your grades maintain really well up through those three semesters, you never drop below the GPA, you're good to go as far as grades go as long as you don't get a D or an F. But if we had people who, if your grades kind of continually drop and you hit below this, this GPA, then we put you on probation 
and we say you've got to get your grades up, and then nine weeks becomes a becomes a cutoff point. So we have seven people we're going to lose. Does that include our one who got a D? Yeah, Forty-eight missing assignments. Yes. Yes. Okay, so that includes that person. Um, so those are grades. So don't freak out about grades, mm -hmm. and do not freak out when you get a poor grade on an assignment. Don't come running to us. Oh, we have some work here. If you have six A's and a B, your GPA is fine. Okay, remember, it's an average. Okay? Now, if you have four A's and a B and a B minus and a C, yeah, you drop below the GPA, then the requirement. Whether that whether you drop below combined with your previous GPAs, we don't know. We'll figure that out. But you can start freaking then. All right. Anything you have to say about any of those? No. You did a good job. Thanks. Um, we have one of our engineers also got referred to the office. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We've talked about this before. Don't get in trouble. Do not get in trouble. That puts you before the Honor Council, and then we have to make a decision as to whether or not to keep you in. We always give you the option to just go ahead and drop out now instead of facing the Honor Council. But if you get in trouble for something, if we see you sitting down in that ISR room for something, there's going to be a conversation. Tardies or plagiarizing yeah. in comp or, or plagiarizing. Plagiarizing, plagiarizing yes. cheating, copying somebody's homework, letting somebody copy your homework. That's the big one. Yeah, being honor society, you're smart kids. Other kids are going to want to borrow your homework. If you let them and you get caught, it can get you booted. Keep that in mind. You letting someone borrow your work is the same thing as you borrowing someone else's. Do not. When they come to borrow it, hiss and scratch at them and run, do not let them have it because we've lost kids that way. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, one quick thing about the Remind and then I'll take a couple questions. The reason there's two things on there, your parents are more than welcome to sign up for a Remind. I know some of them like to, like to do that. They like to know what's going on as well. If you don't want to use the app, you're nuts, but if you don't want to use the app, that's what the whole text thing is there, and your parents may not want to. I would suggest downloading the app on your phone as well, because on the weekend, I, you probably don't carry your iPad around with you. And if I send something out, or if you're on the bus and you don't have Wi-Fi, and I send a remind out, and you want to be one of the first people to get it, having it on your phone is probably the best way to go. And so you can download the app on your phone, or you can go ahead and sign up to get just direct text messages instead. Um, on that Remind account, there are two things that I want to address. One, I don't have a problem with you, with you chatting with me about those things. I have people a lot of times who, who will ask, do not use it, though, as a way just to ask general generic questions, especially right now in seventh grade. If you have a question, talk face-to-face -face with me or with him or with him or with Stump. You have all of us in class at some point. So talk to us there. If you have an immediate question, that's fine. Send me the chat. This I'm very serious about. I may put it in the bylaws and make it a bootable offense. You didn't like your conversation? Do not stamp those messages. <laughs> Do not. I will boot you out of the class. Because I can. Because I control the, the remind. I'm the one who sends them out. So it's not necessarily anything I know much about. I'll just get a message from him. Hey, send this out. When you stamp those things, because I have to have notifications on, because I need to know when people are sending me things, it notifies me, for some reason, twice every time you stamp it. There's no purpose in stamping it. We don't require, the reason that's a feature is so teachers will know if they want to say, hey, stamp this so I know you've got it. I don't care. Don't stamp it. If you continually stamp stuff, I'm going to boot you out of the class. I know people are doing this. I feel my phone going off. Yes, I will continually, put, I will boot you out of the class, and you won't know you're going to get these messages because you're no longer a member of the class. Because you have been told this. My eighth graders have been told. Plus, here's something stamping a message that is literally a month old is ridiculous. That All that does is show me that you're not paying attention to these reminds. I get it all the time. You're stamping this, that, oh, hey, look, preview day notification. So, don't stamp them. There's no purpose in stamping them at all. And it tells us your name when you stamp it. Well, right, because it, it, you're signed up as you, yeah. so I mean, I know it's not just like somebody stamped a message, okay? So, get those things signed up. Um, all right, questions. <laughs> Haley. Um, for tutoring, what does that count for? Ah, yes, here's a good question. Okay, yeah, thank you. Peer tutoring. Being a member... 
and a best buddy and going down as a member of best buddy is not service hours. You're a member of a club. You got house points for that. However, some of you have applied to be a peer tutor next year, and it's going to be a class of yours. You'll find this out much later. If you are a peer tutor who gets a class, and for a semester, you are every you know, second period, you go to Mr. Schomburg's room, we do give you service hours for that, because you work your butt off. You actually get 25 service hours for being a peer tutor, if you are selected for that. And we will automatically put that in. All you'll need to do in your hour sheet is just write peer tutor. That's not till eighth grade. Okay? You do not get service hours for being an office aide, a library aide, a guidance aide. Mr. Modulin's aides, if, if you are someone that he asked to come in and work, you do, because you work a lot there. You only get 15, but you do. But not any of those, because most of the time, you are sitting there doing your homework. And then occasionally you run a pass to somebody. So no service hours for office aid, library aid, guidance aid, but you get service hours for being a peer tutor. Or for being on a sports team, or for being a manager. Right, none of those are service hours. What about the play? Other questions? Yeah, Grayson? Are there sponsored events over the summer? Sometimes. It just depends. Not a lot. Because most of our sponsored events are through other schools. But sometimes we are contacted by organizations. The one that... I don't know if we've got anything yet. Sometimes the Fisher's Freedom Festival will ask us for things, um, but we have not heard anything yet. They, the last couple of years, they've been putting that out on their own, and that yeah. counts as an NJHS. So if you work the Fisher's Freedom Festival, we'll count that as an NJHS event. Now, you're not required to get an NJHS event over the summer. But you can work. So, what, but what we have done, because of our sheer numbers, if for some reason you don't get an NJHS event before school is out, if we have a, a, a sponsored NJHS event over the summer, it'll count for your fourth nine weeks. Yes. There should be no reason you need to roll anything into the first nine weeks of next year, because there are a bazillion events for the first nine weeks. And we start counting the preview day as the first nine weeks. Okay, if you have other questions, do not hesitate to ask us personally. Oh, 